We are all very fortunate from Tibet. Now, one of the highest realized master, now we got darshan and we will get teaching. So please listen one pointedly and whatever His Holiness say, keep it in your heart. All of you are very, very fortunate to sing His Holiness here. And we will all want him to live long and his teaching will go all over the world. This is our main wishing. Thank you very much. Holiness, Kyapkun, Gongwe Chichen Rinpoche, it is a tremendous blessing for all of us to meet and receive teachings today from you. 
This is the Rangjun Yeshe Institute principal, Roger Hodgson, and these are all professors from the Rangjun Yeshe Institute. I'm also one of Rangjun Yeshe Institute's professors, as well as one among Chukinima Rinpoche's translators. On behalf of Chukinima Rinpoche's worldwide students from Rangjun Yeshe Institute, the International Gomde Dharma Centers, the Dharma Houses, Dharma Chakra Translation Committee, Rangjun Yeshe Shenpen, Tara's Triple Excellence, and the students who are connected with all of Rinpoche's worldwide activities, we speak with a single voice to request Kyapun Gongma Rinpoche to live long and continue to teach. It is due to the kindness of Chukinima Rinpoche that each of us have connected with the Dharma and received Dharma teachings. We wish for him to live long and continue to teach the Dharma. This year is Chukinima Rinpoche's Gak, his obstacle year, according to the Tibetan astrology. So we request Kyapun Gongma Rinpoche to please pray for Chukinima Rinpoche's longevity. And we also make the heartfelt request from all of Rinpoche's students around the world for Gongma Rinpoche to please compose a long life prayer for Chukinima Rinpoche this year. Finally, we would like to request Kyapun Gongma Rinpoche to please pray for all of us for the success of our Dharma practice, our studies, our contemplation, and our meditation. Today here, uh, Shinji Marumbuche and all his disciples, students. Uh, first of all, I would like to take this opportunity to express my uh, great pleasure to meet you and uh, wish you all the uh, best of everything. And I really admire with Rinpoche's activities in Dharma service throughout the world. So many people have been benefited through study, contemplation, and meditation. And, uh, and then I've been asked to say some words uh, about the teachings. Actually, you are already hearing so many teachings. There's no need to add anything more, but uh, just to say the few words, but the great Lord Buddha gave an enormous amount of teachings. And all of the teachings are actually to train our minds, to make our minds more clearer, more better, so eventually all of us to become a fully enlightened. So that is the main purpose. So the mind chain, there are many, many different kinds of teachings, the sutras, commentaries, and all kinds of teachings. But the mind training teachings are, are the most uh, effective or the most the relevant in during this very critical time. So I would like to say a few words, just a few words about the, the mind training teaching known as parting from the four attachments. This teaching is given directly by the Manjushri when the great Lama Sakyabha Kunga Nyingbo, when he was young, his uh, masters told him to study. And in order to study, 
you need a wisdom. So to acquire wisdom, you need to propitiate the Manjushri, who is the manifestation of all the Buddha's wisdom. Actually, Lama Sakyaba himself, a Manjushri emanation, but uh, since he was born as a human form, he is taking the human form so that he, uh, he have to go through the human way of life, so therefore that he need to acquire wisdom. And uh, so he entered the Manjushri retreat. And after completing the six months, one day with a lot of light and the Manjushri with the two uh, uh, other bodhisattvas appeared in person. And uh, the main Manjushri said these four lines, said Dilashan and Shobanmin, Koralashan and Genjumin, Tadonashan and Chansanmin, Zimbashun and Tawamin, which means if you have attachment to this life, one is not a religious person or dharmic person. If you have attachment to the realm of existence, you do not have the proper renunciation. If you have attachment to the self-purpose, you do not have the bodhicitta or the enlightenment mind. If grasping arises, you do not have the view. This is a very short, just only four lines, but it contains the entire part of the Mahayana. And uh, so then this, and this great Lama Sakyaba got a great realization and he gave to his son and disciples and then he, they gave to their disciples and it has been passed down up until now and it is used as a preliminary teaching in uh, all our monasteries not only in our monasteries, but in all traditions of Tibetan Buddhism, uh, recognize this as a very mm, relevant mind training teaching, and it has been used in all, all all of the traditions, almost. And so this uh, this teaching uh, has a preliminary part main part and conclusion part. Preliminary part is not in the line itself, but it is obvious as a Buddhist, the very first step we take when you enter the Dharma path is to, uh, to take refuge. Uh, a refuge has many different levels, the Hinayana refuge, Mahayana refuge, Vajrayana refuge, etc. But uh, according to the Mahayana refuge, it is with the four specialties. The first specialty is the specialty of the cause. Generally, the uh, cause of taking refuge is fear, faith, and compassion. Fear for the suffering of samsara, faith in the triple gem, and mm. compassion to the sentient beings. But in Mahayana teaching, all three causes are important, but the most important one is the compassion. Compassion plays as a main role. That makes the Mahayana teaching, the Mahayana refuge, a special, special cause. Because in Mahayana means Whatever practice you do is not for the self of yourself, but for the sake of all other sentient beings. And to do that, you need the compassion. If you don't have the compassion, you, you cannot do that. So the compassion as the main role is the, the spe spe specialty. Then the second specialty is the object of refuge. Object of refuge is same in all the Buddhist traditions, Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, but in the explanation, it is different. According to the Mahayana, Buddha means with the three kayas, Dharma kaya, Sambhoga kaya, 
Nirmanakaya. Dharmakaya means the, the body of reality. And that means the double purity, the natural purity we all have. The nature of our mind is pure. But we, do, we are lacking the second purity. We still, although every sentient being has the Buddha nature, every sentient being's nature of the mind is pure and it's never been strained with the obscurations. But, uh, but at the moment, we, we do not see that. It is completely covered with the obscurations, with the obscuration of the defilements and the obscuration of the uh, knowledge. And so we, do, we are lacking that. So through the accumulation of great merit and wisdoms, that eliminate all forms of obscuration and the second purity. So the Dharmakaya is not something that you gain from outside, but it is something that we, we already have, but revealed or manifested again. So that is the Dharmakaya. And then uh, Sambhogakaya means the body of enjoyment. And through the accumulation of those merits, that uh, uh, that is something you gain newly, is that our ordinary physical body transforms into the uh, Buddha's body with the 32 signs and 80 qualities. And uh, our ordinary voice transforms into the uh, Buddha's voice with the 60 branch of the, uh, the melody of Brahma. And uh, our ordinary mind is transformed into the uh, omniscient wisdom, that wisdom that realizes the true uh, ultimate truth as well as the relative truth and uh, and so this is the the sambhogakaya uh, with the five certainties the certainty of the place that it is in the highest aganista and uh, certainty of the body with the 32 signs and 80 qualities the certainty of the teaching, the Mahayana teachings, the certainty of the time, there's Dharma. Sambhogakaya has no mm, uh, passing or birth or, birth or death, and it's all beyond that. So, um, and uh, certainty of the disciples is only the highly realized Bodhisattvas. And then uh, Nirmanakaya means the body of emanation. And uh, that means, uh, different from Sambhogakaya, the wherever, whenever, whatever form requires will appear. Our historical Shakyamuni Buddha is also uh, actually a Nirmanakaya, but he is even for ordinary people see him as a Buddha. So. So he is known as an excellent Nirmanakaya. And uh, so Buddha with the three kayas is a, is the specialty. And then Dharma, Dharma has two parts, the realizations and the teachings. The teachings, the Mahayana teachings, uh, like the Tripitaka the Vinaya, uh, uh, Abhidharma, and Sutras. And then the realization that the great Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, what they have gained, what they have realized, that is the, uh, the realizations, the two Dharma, the Mahayana Dharma. And the Sangha uh, is uh, the Bodhisattvas. Bodhisattvas who already t entered the, the Buddha's, Buddha's line is called the Bodhisattvas. They are uh, the Sanghas. 
So that is the specialty, or object of specialty. And then um, uh, third is uh, the specialty of uh, duration of the time. Um, when we take refuge, uh, we take, according to the Mahayana, we take refuge from this moment until enlightenment is reached. Because our ultimate goal is to attain the full enlightenment for the ben benefit of all sentient beings. And so that is a specialty, thir third specialty. And fourth specialty is the, the purpose, purpose of taking refuge uh, is not for the sake of yourself, but for the sake of all sentient beings. And so that makes the four specialties with the Mahayana refuge. So with the, that, we take refuge in the Buddha Dharma Sangha. And then second is, second preliminary practice is uh, uh, creating the enlightenment mind. Creating the enlightenment mind is, is to the Space has no limit. So as the sending beings, sending beings has no limit. The limitless sending beings, because we believe in rebirth. In not we are not only this life, but we had from the beginningless time until now. We had enormous, uh, countless lifetimes, lives. And we in the future also, unless and until we attain the liberation or the enlightenment, we will continue reborn. So that every time we born, we are at a different place, different parents, different family. And so it's kind of rotating. So every sentient being is our actually our very dear father and mother and relatives and so on. But due to the change of life, we do not recognize each other. And we see some as our friends, some as our enemies, some as our indifferent. But in reality, every sentient being, including our enemies, are also our mothers, our fathers. So we should, uh, it is our duty to have all sentient beings. So in order to save all sentient beings from the suffering of samsara and uh, lead them to the path of uh, enlightenment. And so in order to do that, we as an ordinary person, we cannot do that. We don't have the ability we don't have the inner wisdom, we don't have the uh, compassion, we don't have the power. So to do that, you need to attain the enlightenment. Because when you attain the enlightenment, then even in a single moment, you can save uh, countless sentient beings through seeing, through touching, through hearing, through remembrance, can benefit enormous amount of sentient beings. So, so therefore, our aim is to attain the full enlightenment. And so to, to creating the enlightenment mind means to wish to attain the enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings. And in order to do through that, you enter the Bodhisattva's path. So that is the creating the enlightenment mind. So these two are the preliminary part. Then the main part, which the first line says, if you have attachment to this life, one is not a dharmic person. This shows directly what is the right way to practice dharma and what is the wrong way to practice dharma. A wrong way to practice dharma is if you have attachment for the sake of this life, 
if you study, for the sake of this life, if you contemplate, if for the sake of this life, if you meditate, then it's not a religion. It appears like a dharma, but it's not a da real dharma. Real dharma is at least what we practice is for the sake of next life, not for this life. Because this life is not a, is a very short, uh, very rarely people live up to 100 years. So it's a time uh, period of uh, during 100 times, 100 years. So it's a very short time and it's a very fragile. It is just like a water's bubbles. The water bubble appears and it bursts at any moment. Similarly, this life can burst at any moment. So it's uh, not uh, worthy of having attachment. And so this, and the right way to practice Dharma is at least realize that this life is not uh, worthy of attachment. And whatever practice you do is not for the sake of this life. At least it's for the sake of next life. Uh, so, so this shows what is the right way to practice dharma and what is the wrong way to practice dharma. So the first thing you give up is you have to give up attachment to this life because this life is very fragile and it's very short and essenceless and purposeless and not worthy of any attachment. And indirectly it shows need to, to practice dharma, need to practice dharma, to, to need to practice dharma, you need to contemplate on the difficulties of obtaining the precious human life. Although every sending being possesses the Buddha nature, so that every sending being has the possibility to become a Buddha if you met with the right method. But the human life, human beings have the best chance. Especially the human life which is endowed with the all the uh, 18 prerequisites. Uh, free from the unfavorable places and uh, the favorable conditions, the conditions you need to gain from your own side and the conditions you need to gain from the uh, others. So this uh, 18 prerequisite is very difficult to obtain from many point of view, from the cross point of view, from the uh, number point of view, from the example point of view, from its nature point of view. So the something that which we, through our prayers, through our merit, that we gain this time, not only human life, but all the 18 prerequisites, which is a, such a difficult to obtain. And so this time, when we have a such great opportunity, if we lose this, there's no greater loss than losing this opportunity. So therefore, by contemplating to this, that need to practice dharma very urgently. And secondly, need to practice dharma, not only important, but to do it very uh, quickly, without any delay, because everything is impermanent, as we see very clearly. Uh, out wo us outside world is changing, our, our own body is changing, our mind is changing, so everything is impermanent. And uh, so, uh, anyone who is born in this, this world have to, has to die. So when we will die, nobody can determine. Nobody can say that you will live. It's difficult to, of course, there are certain uh, masters who have a clairvoyance can predict, but this is rare. And even you have a certain period of time to live in, but certain obstacles such as like the accident can, can happen at any time and you can lose this human life very uh, at any moment. 
And so, therefore, not only need to practice dharma, but also need to practice very quickly without any uh, delay. And then second line which says that if you have attachment to uh, the realm of existence, uh, you do not have the proper renunciation thought. The realm of existence, uh, the kamadatu, rubatatu, and arubatatu, which means realm of desire, the realm of, of forms, and the realm of formless. Uh, so well, the universe is divided into uh, six realms, three lower realms and three upper higher realms. And the three lower realms, if you are born in three or lower realms, there's an unimaginable amount of suffering. And even in the higher realms also, uh, although when we don't examine, we, we see some diff uh, mixture of pleasure and pains. <coughs> but in reality, there's no real pleasure. Even the pleasures that we, we have are also another form of suffering. And so the, mm, to practice dharma for the sake of higher rebirth is not the proper renunciation. Proper renunciation is to realize the entire life, entire universe, not only in the lower realms, but even in the higher realms also a uh, nature of suffering. So that to renounce the entire world, the entire world, and to seek liberation uh, is the proper renunciation. So to uh, to to have attachment to the realm of existence is is not right. It is just like eating a uh, poison. Some poisons, when you eat, when you eat, it tastes sweet. Some poisons are sweet, but after eating it, it can cause tremendous pains and harms. Similarly, to have attachment to higher realms. Uh, it looks nice. Uh, it looks the realm, the higher uh, higher world is looks n nice and 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 looks pleasure. But in in to have attachment to this can cause tremendous harms in the future. So it directly shows the the suffering of samsara, and indirectly. Uh, shows the cause and effect, why we are born here, uh, why we are we're experiencing all kinds of experiences that we have now, who created this, why we have this, and it is nobody created this, nobody is responsible, only yourself is responsible. Your own karma, your own uh, deeds, that your own deeds that you have done, uh, if you have if you have a negative karma, a non-virtuous deed, you will fall down in the lower realms. And um, if you uh, if you have positive virtuous deeds, you will be born in the higher realms. So it and then so there's the non-virtuous deeds and virtuous deeds and in, in uh, indifferent deeds which are not virtuous no, no non virtuous so we must abandon we must abstain from the negative deeds and we must practice virtuous deeds and transform the uh, indifferent deeds into the virtuous deeds and then the third line which says if you have a mm, attachment to the self-purpose. 
you do not have the bodhicitta or the enlightenment mind. This shows directly the bodhicitta, the main bodhisattva's uh, practice. The main bodhisattva's practice is to give up, because up until now, from the beginningless time until now, we only care about ourselves. We always think about ourselves. We only care about ourselves. We only thought about the well-being of ourselves. But all we have accomplished is sufferings, more and more sufferings. But the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, they, they give up for their own purpose and they in devote their entire life and time and energy for the benefit of sentient beings. And they accomplish complete peace and uh, great bliss. Uh, so this time, the Bodhisattva's work is to give, give up our attachment to self-purpose and uh, devote and to change. Uh, main practice actually, Bodhisattva means to exchange meditations, to give all one's own pleasure, one's own virtues, one's own good things, everything to the mother sentient beings and to take all the mother sentient beings, sufferings, misfortunes, everything, the entire to the bad things to, to yourself. And by doing this way that you uh, destroy the self-cherishing thought. And once you have self cherishing there's no self-cherishing thought, then you can gain the real peace. And so if you had to just to seek liberation for yourself and ignoring the mother sentient beings is not right uh, because uh, attaining the liberation for yourself, you do not uh, gain all the, you do not develop your own full qualities. And it is the biggest obstacle attaining the enlightenment. And so to self-purpose, you have a self, you have attachment to self-purpose, then in the long run, it can cause harms. It is just like raising your enemy's thumbs. If you raise your enemy's thumbs, uh, he, he will be pleased for the temporarily, but in the long run, he can cause you sufferings. So the self-cherishing thoughts you have to give up and create the enlightened bodhicitta, enlightenment mind to all sentient beings. And then uh, the last line, which says that if grasping arises, you do not have the view. Uh, this is very short word, but it has contains a, a very uh, elaborate explanation. Because to the birds to fly in the sky, you need the two wings. With the one wing, you can't fly. So similarly, uh, to attain enlightenment, you need both method and wisdom. So the method is the, uh, this bodhicitta. And uh, wisdom, you need the wisdom. Wisdom uh, is the ultimate truth of all all phenomena. And this, to describe that, there are many different views, many different levels of schools to try to explain what is the ultimate truth. But the, according to the highest, the Madhya Mika or the Middle Way schools view is that ultimate truth is beyond perception, beyond explanation, beyond 
uh, words. So if you grasp anything, if you grasp such as like existing or non-existing, both or neither, because ultimate reality is beyond perception, beyond grasping, beyond explanation. So if you grasp anything, then it is not the, the view. Uh, so the ultimate truth is uh, beyond everything. And this to accomplish, you so it directly shows the, uh, the inside wisdom. Uh, but indirectly, the base to practice this is the concentrations. Because without the concentrations, you can't meditate on the inside wisdom. So the first you have to do the concentration. In the beginners with the object and eventually without object on the clarity of the mind. So that if your mind is very clear uh, without any interference of other thought. Because at the moment we our mind is very busy with the stream of thoughts. So on the such busy thoughts, you can't have the uh, the wisdom me meditations. So through the concentration, you have to pacify the thoughts and remain in complete calmness, in complete single-pointedness. On this, then you can meditate on the up. Uh, absolute truth uh, or the inside wisdom. And so through the through the method of method practices and through the wisdom practices with the two together, then eventually you can uh, accomplish the enlightenment. So the result is that eventually, then through these practices, by giving up the attachment to this life, to the realm of existence, to the realm of, uh, uh, to the self-purpose, and through the proper wisdom, then you can accomplish Buddhahood, which has the three kayas, which as I have explained to you during the refugee time, the, the Dharmakaya, Sambhogakaya, and Nirmanakaya. And you can uh, have the uh, unceasing activities, the wheel of activities that will be benefiting to all sentient beings. So the main, back main message is that it is very important to practice, to study Dharma thoroughly. Then after studying, you have to practice it. Otherwise, otherwise, even you you can make a very good dishes, but if you after making the dishes, if you don't eat it, then it has no purpose. So similarly, you have up, you make a very delicious dishes, then you have to eat it. So similarly, after studying that whatever knowledge that you gain, you have to practice into in your own twenty four hours life. 24 hours time life that you you are physically verbally and mentally you have to practice the dharma whatever way and then it becomes the purposeful and our life the human life which is very difficult to obtain is being fulfilled so with that i conclude my brief talk and i hope uh, and I will pray that the Rinpoche will live long, very long, and turn the, your wheel of activities as you already do throughout the world. And uh, all the disciples also will have a good, good health, a long life, and to fulfill all your wishes. May the blessings of the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha be with you now and always. Thank you.
Thank you. 